If you have ever tried to make a temperature blanket and just didn't have enough time, this project is for you. Here, I'm gonna show you how to easily set up a temperature scarf project that can be made in about 10% of the time. My scarf uses chunky weight yarn and a K-sized hook. Let's get started. To easily make one of these for yourself, to easily plan it, you're going to go to temperatureblanket.com. And this site is really cool for all types of temperature projects. So feel free to browse around here. Um, it's a really neat uh, site. There's a lot of features to it. But for our purposes, we are gonna go right over here to Project Planner. As a matter of fact, it, it opens up right in Project Planner, but that's how you can get to it if you're somewhere else on the site. And there are four phases that we need to go through before we have our own temperature blanket plan. We start with location, then we look at the weather details, then we pick our colors, and then finally we get to play around with a preview of our project. So starting here, you're gonna type in your location, and what's cool is you can do a city, a region, or a landmark, which I thought was interesting. But I'm just gonna pick a city. And once you've picked the city, we're going to do something interesting here. We've got our year. We can start with January 1st. And over here, instead of doing one year, we are going to hit custom. Because remember, we need to do 366 days. So unless you're in a leap year, you're gonna have to do this. And you may even need to do this during a leap year, I'm not sure. But we're going to start from January 1st and then we are going to go to, uh, instead of the last day of the year, I'm gonna use one extra day, so I'm just gonna use January 1st. Okay, and so here it should go from 365 days to 366 days. You can add your extra day on the other end as well. Um, it doesn't matter, but you just need to add one extra day. And I am actually doing this on New Year's Day, so that's why it's giving me this notification that it's not in the past, because it is January 1st right now. Then I'm going to search for this location for this time frame. Then it is going to pull up your weather details. In this step, in the weather step, um, I just like to look at, again, the high and lowest temperature, because that's going to affect my ranges for my colors and be my endpoints. So that's that's really all you um, need to do in the weather section, the weather step. So right away, we can head on to colors and colors are always really, really fun. So it starts you off on this um, standard rainbow of colors and you can, I mean, you can look at all these details here. You can look at the range of colors. It's easy to pick different ranges um, for it we will, that feature is gonna be useful to me in a second. Over here, it also shows you how many days of your data are gonna fall in that range. So if we go off of the high temperature, um, then this, and I used all of these colors, which I'm not, I'm gonna change them in a minute. I would use 129 days in, in this one. If we go by the average, um, I don't know if that's the historical average or like the average temperature of the day or something, but the average would only be 11% or 41 days would use this color. So you get a lot of choices here. You can add or take away colors here. You can view it as a grid or a list. Um, so that kind of starts to show you some of the features. Um, you can browse different palettes. You can choose to just have a different number of colors. I'm actually gonna have six colors for mine. And what's fun about that is that if you pick a different number of colors, like I'm gonna use six colors, it automatically changes the ranges of the colors to account for that. So instead of having, you know, 10 degrees per, um, per color, it makes more because I'm using fewer colors. Um, you can take your color palette from an image. You can, um, you can also, change these ranges. I, I think it makes a lot of sense to have equal temperature ranges along all of the colors, but you can change that somewhere in here um, if you click the ranges. Since I'm going off of the high, it automatically adjusts the ranges now. Um, it adjusts the ranges so that 
you don't have a few colors that are going to take up the majority of your project. So the highs, I've got 16% in this color, 17 in this color, 14, 17, 16, and 18% of the days. So there's they're really evenly distributed. I like that. You can change that if you want to um, manually or play around with it, but I really like that. And then if I change it to average or even low, low is showing up now, um, it changes it again. Again, you can see it automatically distributes it. Um, so that's just something I really appreciate about how this whole site is designed. Um, so that starts, that's like how the colors are all laid out. What I'm going to show you now is I'm going to go ahead and choose colorways. And a bunch of colors show up and you can start to see the brand names and the yarn names in here because since this site is especially for temperature projects, it has got different yarns and uh, quite a few of them actually, a lot of different choices in here. So you can absolutely, um, you don't have to use a yarn that is on here. Um, you can use whatever yarn you want and what I would recommend is if you're going to do that, you could just pick colors that look similar um, to the colors you're using. But I happen to be using a color that they have, so I'm going to, um, I, I came up here and I clicked filter. It's up there. And I'm going to be using Lion Brands yarn, some pick Lion Brand, and I am using the Hue and Me yarn. I'm actually um, using, I'm going to have a more neutral or a softer color palette for my uh, project, but it's what I'm doing, so this is what I'm going to show you in my example. And um, as I mentioned, I'm using six colors. So here, when you narrow down your yarn, it is helpful. This is a little tip. It is helpful to go ahead and start with your hottest or coldest color and go ahead and try to do them in order. Um, I find it saves time rather than switching out the, um, the ranges manually later. So I had spicy. I've got um, grapefruit, Bellini, and then toast, and then fatigues and magic hour. Those are my colors from hot to cold. I'm going to save them. And now it's got my, I think I left this on average. So I'm going to go ahead and configure the ranges and it is going high to low. That's good. That's what I wanted. And I'm going to go on the high temperature. Okay. And now from here, I'm going to save this. Once you've got your colors and your ranges, the way that you want them, um, you, uh, and you're done playing around with it there's probably other details in here that I'm missing that might be useful for your project. But once you get your colors and your ranges basically sorted out, you're ready to move on to preview. And preview is so fun because you can see your color palette in a bunch of different formats. So when you open it up, it automatically goes to rows. There's a lot of things you can play with here. And what we're interested in is, oh, not calendar, although I really like the idea of calendar as well we need corner to corner. And so here's what our project would look like as a blanket, which is really fun. Um, actually, you can pick whether to use the higher average temperature here as well. So make sure it's still on what you want. I specifically wanted to go with the high temperature for everything that I've picked because it makes a more colorful project for me. Uh, so this is what it would look like if I wanted to do a blanket with 15, so each day I would crochet 15 squares, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to only do one square for each day. And when you save that, you get a rendering of what your scarf is going to look like. So the options over here give you all your options. It automatically went to the one that is not, is the least extreme out of all of these, because if you were doing this, you could do three times 122, that would be a very long scarf and just about as ridiculous as the first one that I did. So it goes to the most moderate option. So um, here's how you get what you're actually making. This is, this is what we're making. So once you get to the point where you have your, um, you have your dimensions, you, your line length should be set at one and this should be set on whatever you want. That's what my project would look like with lows. I'm not going to do that averages and highs. Again, I like the highs. So 
I want to save this now so I can make my project. You can also send it to the project gallery, which I think I'll go ahead and do. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm gonna send it to the gallery. What, this is where we get to the only thing that I have found about this site that I do not like. If you actually save this um, as a PNG image, that's the only way that I know how to how to save it because that's the only option it, it gives down here is to save it as a PNG image. You get mm, this right here. And don't worry about the fact that it's small. You can zoom in on it. But what I want you to notice is that when I zoom in really close to this, there are no lines. There are no lines whatsoever. And um, I would find it very difficult to work from this with no lines. Instead, I got this version where I can see the grid lines. And um, to do that, to do that, I took a screenshot. So this is really gonna depend on your computer or whatever device you're able to use. You may want to just, um, you may just wanna work on this from a screen, which is totally fine. In fact, if you don't have an ideal situation where you can print this out, um, you may want to do it as a screen. You can also, um, you can send this to the project gallery. You can also come up here and save it. And when you save it, you can get this code, this, um, this web page that you can copy, and then you can just save it somewhere and you can open it in a new tab at any time. And so you can come back to it that way to actually work on your project. When I printed this, I am still able to see these grid lines pretty well. The other thing I would recommend you do is I would recommend you, um, I would recommend that on your printer settings, you try to print this at the highest quality possible so that it makes it easier for you to see these grid lines. Um, that's the best solution I have at this time. And when I was uh, able to print it out, it actually gave me something that I can see to work with a lot more easily than if you use the uh, download image PNG option here. And that's pretty cool. When you click on it, it actually shows you the day. So that's pretty cool. That might be a really good way for you to work on this. If you're, if you want to do it from the screen, you can just click the button side to side and it'll tell you what uh, color to use. That's really cool. I did not realize that until just now. Thank you so much for letting me share this project with you. If you happen to make a temperature scarf using this method, I would love for you to share. Bye.